Imagine if your boss called the most important one-on-one -on -one meeting in the depths of the financial crisis in the men's bathroom while he was going number two. This actually happened to a friend of mine who was a portfolio manager at one of the world's biggest hedge funds. His boss, who's worth billions of dollars, came by his desk as their portfolio was losing a ton of money. Come with me, he said. He had all the risk reports in his hand and he took my friend through the office, swerving through the cubicles until landing at the men's bathroom. He continued to open the door, open the stall, close the stall while my friend waited on the other side and he peppered him with questions about the risk of the portfolio, the losses, and what my friend was going to do about it. Now you've probably never been in such a situation, but if it were you, would you actually quit? Would it be a sign that it was time to quit that job? Now, this is a video for hard charging, hardworking professionals who are making good money, but wondering, is this it, right? So here are five signs that it might be time to quit your job. The first is defining your non-negotiables. The second is calculating the true cost of success. Third, identifying who gets your best energy. Fourth, figuring out where am I numbing myself? And then fifth, asking yourself, am I just going through the motions? Once we give you those signs, we'll give you a framework to help you identify what is the perfect job for you. And the first sign is to define your non-negotiables and see if anyone is violating them. Now we'll take you to another Wall Street story. Yes, all the bad shit happens on Wall Street. And this was about 30 years ago when my friend was working on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. My friend was Jewish. His boss came up to him pulled down the back of his shirt and drew a swastika on the back of his neck, walked away and laughed. Now, my friend couldn't quit. He had student loans to pay. This was his first job. But everyone has their red lines, their non-negotiables, racism, sexism, abuse, verbal, physical. If those lines are violated and you have the financial ability to quit, then it becomes a no-brainer. The next sign that it might be time to quit is you recognize the true cost of success. Now, what do I mean by that? Now, I too used to work on Wall Street. And while I was grinding in my 30s, when I looked at the folks who were 10 or 15 years older than me, yes, they had incredible lives. They had kids in private schools. They had big house in the suburbs, multiple X5s, and a summer house in the Hamptons or in Aspen. And on top of that, they had ridiculous access to some of the biggest events, the Super Bowl, Drake concerts, F1 in Las Vegas. Now, on the surface, all of that looked great but there was a cost to that. They were always, always, always on calls, taking phone calls outside of their kids' recitals. They were overweight, they were going bald, they looked even older than they were. Many of them had marriages that were falling apart, but mostly a lot of them were just going through the motions. They were dead inside, which we'll talk about with the fifth sign. The next sign is about energy, and specifically, who gets your best energy? The couples therapist, Esther Pearl, has this gnarly quote that says, too many people bring the best of themselves to work and bring the leftovers home. Now, when I worked on Wall Street, I was totally guilty of that, which is ironic because if I asked myself, Kay, why do you work? I would say it's for my wife, Lisa, it's for my two incredible daughters, yet here I was giving them the worst of my energy. I would come home tired, grumpy, distracted. Lisa would say to me, you give your intern way better energy than you give me. And I have this really embarrassing trick with my kids where I could read them a book like Goodnight Moon while writing an email to my boss in my head. Now, when your actions don't match your actual values, then it's really time to investigate. And look, I am not advocating that you don't need to work hard. I worked extremely hard during my 20s and early 30s. But remember, there are seasons for hard work and there are seasons when you make that trade-off for other parts of your life like family. The next sign that it may be time to quit is to ask yourself, Am I numbing myself? Now, you'll never believe my nightly routine when I worked on Wall Street, which, by the way, if you're curious about how I became one of the youngest managing directors at BlackRock, only to quit at age 35, there is a video that we'll put in the notes below. Now, back to that routine. Each night when I got home from work, I would drink two beers, order takeout pad thai, and then wash it down with half a pint of Ben & Jerry's fish food. Yes, I did that for a good eight years. Crazy enough, I still have a six pack and I'm also teetering on the brink of type two diabetes, not a shocker. But the point here was that I was totally off between the lack of sleep, the stress, the anxiety, the workaholism. The only way that I could feel normal 
was by stuffing my face with ice cream and beer. Now you might have your own flavor of numbing. It might be Reddit, it might be YouTube, TikTok, pornography, video games, whatever it is. If you are numbing yourself to cope for your day job, it might be a sign. Okay, so you finally made it to the fifth sign that it's time to quit. And after this, we've got our perfect job framework. This fifth sign is if you are going through the motions, clocking in, clocking out. Now you've heard about the great resignation, quiet quitting, lazy girl jobs, where people are just going through the motions. In fact, six out of 10 employees in the US are completely disengaged from their job. Now look, there's some messed up stuff going on like toxic hustle culture and janky return to the office policies. But if you are just going through the motions, consider this, 90,000 hours of your life will be spent at work. A third of your waking hours of your lifetime will be spent at work. Are we really going to just pretend and go through the motions apathetically? Now you might need a month, you might need three months, you might need six months to get your bearing and your footing. But after that, you've got to say to yourself, enough is enough. So now you've gone through the five signs and maybe some of them caught your attention and you're saying to yourself, it's time to quit, but you got to go somewhere. You have to look for and identify what that perfect job looks like. Now, for some people, it might be a YouTuber. For others, it might be a veterinarian. And for some, you just want to get that fucking cheddar and work on Wall Street. There's absolutely no singular right answer for a perfect job. It's deeply personal. But here's a framework that I use with my coaching clients that you can use as well. The framework has you stack rank seven attributes of a perfect job. Financial security, status, impact, learning, flexibility, craftsmanship, and socialization. So let's look at each one individually. All right, so first up, you have the big kahuna. Financial security. Now, most of us are not independently wealthy, so we need to work to make a living. Now, the amount that you need to make to lead a sustainable life for you and your family is gonna vary wildly based on where you live and what your needs are. So the first criteria is, what is the amount of money I need to lead a financially sustainable life? Next, we have status and identity. Now, this one is super juicy since we are social animals and we like to compare ourselves relative to our peers. Now for some, not all, it might be very important to be seen as smart, as cultured, as scientific, as athletic. Again, some people care a lot about the status their job confers on them and others don't really give a fuck. Next, we have flexibility, a big topic coming out of the pandemic. Now, some people care for others, older parents or young kids, and they need that flexibility for pickups, for recitals, or for doctor's appointments. Other people might want to just YOLO it and work out in the middle of the day. And some people are totally okay with a more structured existence, like a nine to five job and a commute. Then you have impact and meaning, making your little or big dent in the universe. Some people want to see the thing that they spend all their time on actually improve the world, actually improve other people's lives. Other people might work, collect the paycheck, donate some of it to charity and others might just work and pocket the paycheck. Again, a personal decision. Next, you have craftsmanship. Do you take pride in your work? Maybe you have that perfectly formatted and syncing Excel model, or you're able to write beautiful copy on a sales page. Taking pride in your craft is a deep source of fulfillment for many people, but not all. The next one is near and dear to my heart. It's learning. I have always optimized my own career around learning, around challenging myself. I've always believed that if I'm learning the most, then all the other parts of my life and my career will fall into place. But again, some people like to do more repetitive tasks. They like to have a more structured environment and they don't want to be intellectually swinging for the fences every day at work. And last, you have one of the most controversial out there, socialization. Now, some people, would rather poke their eyes out than to go to the company sanctioned bowling event or that happy hour that gets you home two hours later than normal that you're not even paid for. But on the flip side, other people, especially younger workers that are living with roommates in small apartments, they want to meet their like-minded peers. They want to meet people their age. They want that in-person experience of an office. And again, this is ultimately a personal preference, usually driven by your phase of life. All right. So now we've gone through 
all of the criteria of the perfect job, here is your homework. I want you to grab a piece of paper. At first, write out financial security and what you need to lead a sustainable life for you and your family. After that, put two of your need to haves. Maybe it's learning, maybe it's flexibility, but list them out. Those are your need to haves. Draw a line and then rank the remaining four. Those are your nice to haves. Maybe it would be nice to have learning, but at the end of the day, you just want to get paid and you want a flexible work schedule. Once you have that criteria listed out in front of you, you can be much more intentional and strategic about finding your next job so that hopefully you'll never have to quit again.